मुझसे सुंदर सपनों से प्यारा है अपना घर जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू वही आपका अपना घर संसार ज्वाइन मी ऑन घर संसार मंडे टू फ्राइडे नाइन एम टू ट्वेल्व पी एम ओनली ऑन रेडियो फीजी टू Nisambulo binaka oya wone kama na langi oni na ndorumo ya ume na ziwa kina ruwe na bisinga me na moni tikina boga rombo kana radio fiji wana ndome biti bonga ni bianyano na maka talenga na bengo na sasi biani na tin na kaloko na bimbongi ni buke lulu kena bima mani walu na bimbongi ni boka ruwai me na mbuzi ni walu ninge na maka Tonight, sugar industry on path to recovery. Suicide prevention is everybody's business, and hopes high for revival of copper industry with new increased prices. Good evening. I'm Jackie Spate, and you're watching FBC News. The Fiji Sugar Corporation is predicting sugar production to exceed expectations this season, with the sugar industry marking one of its most improved performances in recent times. FSC Executive Chairman Abdul Khan says this is indication from a strong tons cane to ton sugar ratio, which is at 9.3, the best in three years. Christopher Chand reports. It may seem that the industry is now in good health. The FSC is forecasting better results from what they had initially expected. I think the way we're going at the moment, we, we may actually exceed the, the targets that we had set. All four mills are crushing more cane compared to the same period last year, considering this year's crushing has been reduced to four months. As of yesterday morning, we had uh, processed about 873,000 tons of uh, sugar cane, and we had made uh, 94,100 tons of uh, sugar at a TCTS of 9.3. Shows that, you know, we're still making those incremental improvements. The industry has been through one of its toughest periods in history. Because the more sugar we make and, and the less sugar cane we use to make that same amount of sugar, the benefit also goes to the farmers as well. So, yes, it, it, it is looking good for the industry. With these promising signs only midway through the crushing season, it may seem that the industry is already on its way to recovery. Christopher Chand. FBC News. It may be daunting, but it is a fact. Suicide is becoming more frequent among young people. Recent figures show that the incidence of suicide between the age of 10 and 20 is rising. This frightening revelation was made by the Fiji Police Force as the world marks World Suicide Prevention Day today. Ritika Pratap reports. Suicide rates have increased by 60% worldwide and become the third leading cause of death among those aged between 15 and 24. Alarmingly, in Fiji, the leading cause of death in the 10 to 20 age category is suicide. Victims have been getting younger. Unfortunately, we had a, a, a child who was in class three who, after a sort of a disagreement just with the parents, um, decided to take uh, his own life. To date, 80 suicide and 83 attempted suicide cases have been reported. Most victims are males. That's because they are, when a male person or a man decides to that this is it, they don't want to go on anymore, they would choose uh, methods which are more lethal mm -hmm. compared to the female. The police force is now taking a new approach in investigating attempted suicide cases. They come across a case of attempted or suicide cases that they have to dig deeper and find out why. The why part is something that we are really trying to get about. People are being encouraged to light a candle near a window tonight. This is to show support for suicide prevention, to remember a loved one lost through suicide, and for those that have survived. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Copper industry stakeholders are hopeful that the new increased price will attract more farmers to invest in copper farming. Fiji's copper industry has been dying a slow death as a result of low copper prices and unattractive incentives. Shireen Lata reports. According to Copra Millers of Fiji, there's been low copra production since August last year. As farmers only tend to take copra farming seriously, 
when they are in serious need of money. In the season, it should be like somewhere around 500 to 700 metric tons per month. Eh? That is from April to somewhere around September. But we were hardly getting 200 metric tons because the farmers were not prepared to cut. However, with an increase in copra prices up to $780, Things are looking good for the industry. Some of the locals are already putting up little dryers and they're collecting their coconut. There'll be a big increase in copper, I think, at the copper mill. When it's down, it's very difficult for the farmers here to survive. We are agent for the copper buyer, copper agent. Eh? They're very happy. They're just in increase this one. This price is very happy to the customers. In our area, the Sangani and, uh, and uh, Philip West. We are running a business, so we need a profit. Eh? When we are running the vehicles or taking out the wages for them from the laborers, so it is beneficial when the prices. The new prices were determined by the Ministry of Agriculture following the change in world market prices. We are wanting people to start replanting because the production has been going down because of the age, aging of uh, coconut trees. Copra prices have increased after 15 long years. Shahin Lata, FBC News. The Fijian government is continuing to empower ordinary Fijians by providing them with access to basic necessities. And through its Look North policy, the government is opening five more telecenters in the Northern Division, which has now become an essential service in everyday life. Ritika Pratap reports. People in Senganga can now connect easily with family and friends outside of Vanwalevu and get necessary information with the opening of this new telecenter. We want to do a lot more to develop a Bundu level. And uh, an important part of that is to give uh, the people of Bundu level or the northerners access to the telecommunications revolution that is transforming the lives of people across Fiji and across the world. Warenge Beni Marama says there's been a lot of infrastructural developments, especially with the construction of the number Walu Dreketi Highway. However, equipping people with the latest technology is as important. This is uh, another way, another highway of another sort, but just as important, giving ordinary Fijians access to the information superhighway and empowering them in a way that previous generations would not, would never have imagined. 570 students will use this telecenter during school hours and the rest of the community in the evening and on weekends. But essentially, what it means is that with the click of a mouse, you can immediately get into something called the World Wide Web and get instant access to almost any information you want. The second telecenter was opened at Nandongo Secondary School today. Ten telecenters are already operating in various parts of the country. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The Philippine government has welcomed Fiji's new constitution. This was relayed to the President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau this morning by the new Philippines non-resident ambassador to Fiji, Her Excellency Virginia Benavides. Benavides presented her credentials to the president at Government House today. She's applauded Fiji's support at various international forums and welcomed its democratization. The Itauke community is being advised to understand the provisions of the new 2013 constitution to avoid any misdirection on issues concerning them. Itauke Affairs Permanent Secretary Savinada Kaunisila says this is vital, particularly on the sharing of mineral royalties with the state. Make along with the story. Section 30 of the 2013 Constitution ensures fair share of royalties or any other money paid to the state in respect of rights to extract minerals. The challenge now is getting all stakeholders to understand the provisions. This will need a lot of consultation uh, amongst the, the Itoke, uh, the landowners, not only them, but also consultation between all other ministries. The Itoke Affairs believes understanding the provisions in the constitution is vital to clear any ambiguity. I'm really not sure on the ones that already existed with the contracts have already been drawn and so and, and other things that have been done, whether that will affect that or not. But again, as I said, uh, there are a number of stakeholders that need to 
to, 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 to intervene into that, you know. The Itokai Affairs is advising all Itokais to grab hold of a copy of the new constitution and read the relevant passages thoroughly as not to cause confusion or any unnecessary disputes in the future. How and when uh, it will materialize, it will come. Uh, but it needs to be understood, fully understood, as far as I'm concerned, um, my own view at this point in time. The 2013 constitution became the supreme law of the land on Saturday after it was assented to by the president on Friday. Mikolonga, FBC News. Just ahead, growing interest in Fiji film industry. Nimbula, Medango Nimilote in Nice Sorotumboa. Namakao Minaruka in honor of a cabby muni taking of Wakarobuka. Romana via Sama can be book of Barotakin in Recomalolo and a radio Fiji one and a Wong Gani Pioniano. Gay Namakio Kina Aki Shadi Hunivali, eh? Punch punch with Chiunge, Punch 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 Punch. Hi, Mehua Kisaheli Venus, Sultan, Mitch FF, Mehuna, no say Bara Vegetek. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. The government is working on modernizing agriculture in Fiji. Agriculture Minister Inese Ruiratu made the statement while launching the Fiji National University's Unifarm in Navoa yesterday. Epelito Kouasa reports. The FNU's Unifarm in Navoa is an effort by the university to train upcoming farmers on new agricultural practices using modern technology. The decision by FNU to acquire this prime agricultural property that you now call Unifarm is a significant milestone in the development of the university and of course the agricultural sector in Fiji. More than 2,000 acres of land has been used by FNU for students to undertake practical training in agriculture. That it is to be a model training farm equipped with modern technologies and husbandry practices to help solve the problems that modern farmers may face. The farm will greatly improve agriculture activities in Fiji with high hopes of luring young people into the agriculture sector. There is a critical need in agriculture in Fiji today just to bring efficiency into what it is already doing. This is something that we need to do together. The farm will also help the government to improve performances of resource-based sectors in Fiji. Epeli Tukwasa, FBC News. The Fiji Elections Office says they have gained experience that will help in the 2014 election preparations during a mission to observe Australia's federal election in Canberra last week. Acting Permanent Secretary for Elections Mohamed Sanim says they've learned about the setup and management of polling stations. He says it was also valuable to see the way Australia's voter education program is conducted. The team also observed pre-polling polling, the scrutiny of votes, counting after the polls closed, and the election night virtual tally. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Iowane Naivalurua has introduced a plan to prepare police officers for retirement. It's been found that some police re retirees have financial difficulties when they leave the force. Vusita Kotewasawasa reports a workshop is now underway to prepare 49 officers who will be retiring soon. These officers are learning how to be financially stable when they retire. Crime officer John Simmons says he has served 37 years in the force and will be retiring next month. According to him, this workshop could not have happened at a better time. It is the first of its kind. It is the first of its kind. And it should not, not be done only to those who are expecting to retire, but those who are still in the force. Superintendent Bola Tamanisau also shared the same sentiments. So we want to win for more days, or at least for a future after service. After service in the face. Police spokesperson Anane Soro says this initiative has been implemented by the police commissioner who brought in stakeholders to assist retiring officers. Over the years, 
and the Commission of Police has uh, noticed is that most of the senior officers after retirement they're still burdened with uh, financial obligations because they haven't exactly been paid well or they haven't been given the, uh, the um, an insight on what they can actually or what sort of uh, ventures that they can go into. The Life After Service workshop ends on Friday. Pusita Kotiwasawasa, FBC News. The talents of young and upcoming Fijian movie makers will be revealed at the launch of the FNU's Film Festival on Friday. Chanel Sivan reports local interest in film production is growing. Hey. <laughs> it's just me. This is just a glimpse of the talent that exists right here in Fiji. A movie made in Fiji by young artists. Today the Fiji National University launched its film festival screening 220 films, of which 69 are locally produced. And the interest from overseas has also been overwhelming. India has been happy to send a number of films, both in the competition category and the non-competition category, as well as a number of documentary films. And I do hope that you will enjoy this. The week-long festival that showcases the best of international cinema hopes to draw keen film producers. Express your ideas and all. That's how you tell your story. Yeah, if you can't write a story or if you can sing a story, you might as well make a film and tell a story. Making a movie doesn't mean just only you, you need the whole team with you. It's an exciting industry, new, uh, you learn different things. There are lots of things to do in the film industry. Uh, movie making, it uh, means a lot. Because eh? uh, it can... If you are inspired by making movies, you can also make a living out of it. Eh? Police coming! Buddy are going jail! With this interest, hopes are high of Fiji getting more international recognition in filmmaking. The film festival is from the 13th to the 19th of this month with movies showcased at all FNU campuses around Fiji. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. That time again and we join Jamie now with sports. Thank you Jackie. Good evening. After the break our seventh side record convincing wins on day one of competition and Lotte Tungiri to miss out on Rugby League World Cup. Details coming up. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9am to 2pm on The Centre Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Isambul binaka, pada anggota di sini dalam nama kita mana yang masih dengan orang orang kita lalui nak kabi, mana tahu kita nabi tu, ena moni dengan apa rombuka, ena bola FM, nampun dua ena seri. Welcome back to FBC Sports. The Fiji Sevens side dominated their three Pacific Mini Games matches this morning with huge scorelines. They thumped Wallace and Fortuna 34-0 and later went on to devastate Tuvalu 55-0 and beat Tonga 24-0. Despite a lack of experience, Fiji showed that it could still pile up the points, but the real test will come tomorrow when they face Samoa. The team is new and some members inexperienced, but so far all has been good. However, manager Issei Rayawa is not impressed. Almost everybody got on the score sheet and they are yet to allow the opposition to cross their line. However, the manager believes individualism is creeping into the game. I like the emphasis that uh, bless the, the, game, the game pattern that we want to use for the, as we go up, this is where we have to practice. So. Anyway, we are happy with the result, but uh, there are still few errors that we need to improve. And uh, I think the boys uh, know what uh, we are looking for and what we expect, especially what the boys, especially what the nations uh, want. Fiji has brought only nine players, and an injury now could mar the competition for the team. There's also the question of the hot Wally Sun, which will ask a lot from the boys and be a gauge of their fitness. Well, uh, if you look at it, uh, see for. Used to be Hong Kong, they used to be taken only nine. Yeah? Since there were only two, two tournaments in one leg, so they increased it to 12 for the safety. So that should be enough. The Rugby Sevens competition consists of only seven teams, therefore, they all have to play each other. The two top teams will go for the gold medal playoff, while the third and fourth into the bronze. This scenario may see Fiji play somewhat twice, as these two teams have stemmed their authority from their first game. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports.
Husband and wife Shane and Tariqa Brody are on the right course towards a definite gold medal finish in the Hobie Cat competition at the Pacific Mini Games. And their story in going for gold is like one of those romances people see in movies or read about. Shelvin Chan caught up with a happy couple. They sat together on the flight to Wallis and Futuna and have been hand in hand since then. Could this chemistry between them be the secret of their mini game success? There's no secret really, it's just uh, go out there and do the best you can and um, don't give up until the end. One race at a time. Exactly. Sailing is a big part of the Brody's life. In fact, sailing is what got them together. We've sailed together since uh, we were, before we were married and uh, we've been almost married 10 years now and um, we basically work together really well on the boat so we work together, we play together, we do everything together. The Brodies have led the course from day one. They believe it's their love for sailing which is helping them. If we haven't gone sailing for a weekend, it's not a good weekend. <laughs> It's a good, good way to um, de-stress as well for both of us. We both work together and just going out there, not having to think about anything else but sail is, is good. The Brodies is just a matter of finishing the next two races and they get a gold. And for the pairing of uh, Graham Southwick and Api Meliki Dodo, they just could clinch a bronze medal. Whatever the results, Fiji could come back with a gold and bronze. From the Pacific Mini Games here in Wallis and Fortuna, this is Shelvin Chan for FBC Sports. Well, looks like Shelvin found his love as well in Wallace and Futuna. Hopefully he finds his way back home properly. The sponsors of Pacific Mini Games 100 and 200 meter record holder Banube Tambaka Odoro today celebrated his victories with a reception in his honor. The medal winning Bao native is now looking at breaking out of the Pacific in a bid to better his times in bigger competitions. Salen Daudakadaka has more. A hero's welcome for Sprint King Banube Tambakodoro for his efforts in Wallace and Fortuna by his sponsors Digicel. Pleased with his performance, the 21-year-old says he is considering making a move offshore to compete against faster athletes. I need to be uh, uh, competing where competitions are really, really tough and uh, just going to places where you know the sprinters, uh, you know, they really work hard. So I don't think there's anything left for me here in the Pacific. I need to be moving out of the Pacific into Australia, New Zealand, or even in the U.S. as well, if that's possible. Tambacodoro was part of a 25-member squad, majority of whom were competing in a regional meet for the first time. Well, the squad was really good. You know, we had a lot of young athletes. Uh, there were 25 of us, uh, 19 of them all high school students. And, you know, uh, they came out, you know, they just uh, did their best. You know, a lot of them came out with personal bests uh, and uh, won, even won medals as well. So, you know, I take my hat off to these uh, young kids as well. You know, they've uh, really worked hard and uh, they've done us proud as well. Meanwhile, his coach, who has mentored the speedster for over a decade, echoed the same sentiments in regards to lowering his time. The World Championship, that's his first big, uh, big uh, competition, and you know, he's not used to that kind of atmosphere, so he needs to get used to it more. Week in, week out, he needs to go in and out of the States or Europe, get into the Grand Prix, for him to get used to those kind of, those kind of pace. Eh? Tambacodoro is off to New Caledonia next month to compete in a French Grand Prix athletics event. Talendo da Kavaka, FBC Sports. With Roy Krishna having signed to play for Auckland City, hopes are that this could lead him to playing in Europe in the near future. Fiji Football Coaching Director Carlos Buzetti says they are delighted with the progress of the Lambasa lad and are confident of Krishna's future. He always follow first with Waitaikiri and now have a great opportunity again to be in the World Cup with uh, Auckland City and uh, we will support and encourage him in, in every possible way. You know? Of course, still, like we say before you arrive, uh, still young and, and still will be the opportunity maybe to go to Europe for try next year um, and more encouraged uh, and more happy to, to support him in every possible way. The Fiji National Rugby League says they respect the decision made by Lotte Tungiri in regards to him switching back to rugby union. Tungiri, who featured for the West Tigers in the NRL in Australia, was one of the players named to Fiji's World Cup squad. The Irish Times reports that Tungiri has signed a three-month contract and is due to arrive at the club this weekend. The switch means Tungiri will be ruled out of this year's Rugby League World Cup. That was your sports for this evening. It's back to Jackie now for business.
Fijian Holdings Limited's joint venture partner in Basic Industries Limited, Wholesome New Zealand Limited, has sold their 49% shareholding to Vinod Patel Group. FHL now owns 51% shares of Basic Industries and 49% by Vinod Patel Group. FHL Group Chairman Yawane Naiveli says they welcome their new joint venture partners and are confident to achieve growth and expansion. BIL, which operates under their brand name Standard Concrete, is the largest ready-mix concrete supply in Fiji. BIL has recently launched Aglime, a branded product for the agriculture sector. Time for weather now, and it wasn't nice and sunny today, as you promised yesterday, Jen. I apologize wholeheartedly, Jackie. I've copped a lot of flack today about the weather. Understandable, I was expecting sunshine as well. Unfortunately, there were clouds and showers today for Suva and Savasavu. The forecast was spot on though for Lambasa and the western side, so I think I've redeemed myself a bit. Nandi, Lautoka and Ba shared the highest temperature today, 30 degrees, while the capital has the lowest on 26. More clouds and showers in store tomorrow throughout Fiji. We should have some sun during the day though, but I won't promise you anything. Now for some reason, I think of that book Swiss Family Robinson when I see this picture. Oh, and the Jungle Book. This was taken by Narendra Naidu in beautiful Mate Tavuni. Thanks Narendra, your photo has really encouraged me to go visit the Garden Island. Thanks so much for that Genevieve. The headlines again, sugar industry on path to recovery with predictions of high sugar production this crushing season. Authorities call for more effort in suicide prevention and copper farmers welcome new increased copper prices. To the poll question now when we're asking, should the new Australian government engage with Fiji quickly? www.fbc.com.fj is the website to visit to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. And that's news for tonight. Join us again at the same time tomorrow. Until then, good night. Bula. Oya wa sala bilawa. Do bata ke ya mena diwa ke na tini ka rona ka loko na singa le boni moni tiki na vara rumbuka. Ka ko ni valata na no musini sarisari. Na ka isa muri ndolo loma le ne bani ni nao. O ngori ke de mena diwa ke na tini ka rona ka loko na singa le boni moni tiki na vara rumbuka. Ena bula FM number 2 en sere. I wake up in the morning, I prefer to go down to the gym get a bit of physical work done. Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are. A bit of research. And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam. Every weekday from 3 o'clock to 7, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up?